Hey folks, Chitta here. Today, we're gonna be talking about our prep for the anamorphic on a budget shootout. When consulting lens manufacturers about our testing, all of them had one request in common, making sure our flange distance was perfect. Ensuring this distance is correct would allow us to accurately assess a lens's performance. In case you don't know, the flange distance is the space between the mount of the camera and the camera sensor. If that distance is off by fractions of a millimeter, it can break how anamorphic lenses focus. Check out module two for more on anamorphic focusing mechanics. We'll revisit that concept again in module three. For our testing, we chose the Zcam E2 F6, since we can change the mount on it for PL and MFT and keep a consistent sensor throughout our tests. For MFT, our target flange distance is 19.25 millimeters, and for PL, our target is 52 millimeters. When focusing a spherical lens, the whole optical block moves back and forth, meaning that it's still possible to achieve perfect focus regardless of the flange distance being incorrect. The marks on the barrel of the lens won't match the focus distance when that happens. The flange distance being inaccurate becomes less important with spherical as long as the lens has enough extra throw to hit the desired range of focus. Many focusing mechanisms for anamorphic lenses rely on having the anamorphic block locked at infinity and focus being achieved by other moving optics. Like this video if you already learned this concept from the cookbook. If you or me or anyone has a bad flange distance, the results using anamorphics are compromised from the get-go as the anamorphic block will be off its design target and you are prone to inferior performance and astigmatism. This is not quite the case with adapters as you can constantly adjust focus on every part of the rig to optimize performance, but it's a big, big deal for lens manufacturers. To verify these numbers on our camera, Atlas Lens Co. sent us the Dens Flange Distance Checker. This device will allow us to check the current flange distance and assess if the mount needs to be adjusted to hit our target flange. The Dens will also help us confirm the adjustments worked as expected. I gotta say, this is a pretty weird looking piece of gear. The first time I put it on, I couldn't tell what was happening, so I had to actually resort to the manual. If you look in the monitor and then you actually punch it in, you're gonna see what's happening. You have a plus and a minus. On each side of the center of the image, there's a thin line. So adjusting the focus, focus, I'm calling it a focus ring on the dens, is going to switch that line around towards the plus or the minus. Our verification involves setting the dens in a way that the black line is evenly displayed on both sides. But I'm jumping the gun here. Mount the dens onto the camera, set it to the 52 millimeter mark, the perfect PL flange distance. Now rotate the focus ring until you get the line to be even on both sides. And that will tell us how much we need to adjust. So we're about 0.4 millimeters off. So we need to increase the distance from the sensor to the mount by 0.4 millimeters. The one thing that is most intense that I noticed with the Zcam is when I turned on the camera and did this for the first time, this value was completely different. When I first turned on the camera, this value was actually closer to plus 10, which is insane. It's a huge number. The tolerance for acceptable performance is 0 0.01 to 0 0.02 millimeters. The reading is 10 times off what we should have. I even made a shim out of paper to adjust for that. And then as the camera warmed up and I checked again, I realized that I had too much going on and I had to subtract it. To help us out, Andrew Chan at SLR Magic sent us these tiny, tiny shims that they make for the Z cam. Each of these colors has a different size. So we're gonna add those in behind the mount to correct that flange and make sure that our tests are accurate. Some cameras like Ari or Red natively allow you to correct the flange distance rather than using shims. This is a big plus as with shims, you can only add space between the sensor and the mount. Whereas with native support, you can move the sensor back and forth on one axis. Since we're 0.04 millimeters short, we're adding the purple inserts to correct it. These are 0.025 millimeters thick. 
almost perfect. It says I have to add a tiny bit. Uh, so now we're just 0 0.015 off, which is an acceptable tolerance. There's a great article on lens rentals by Roger Sakala, and he talks that if your flange is off at 0 0.01 to 0 0.02, you're okay. So this is probably it, but first, we gotta do the MFT mount as well. The Dent has a multitude of adapters, so you can check the flange on almost any camera. Here we have the PL to MFT adapter. But now, the line is very skewed to the negative side. To get it even, I would need to subtract 0 0.08 millimeters. It means that there's too much space between the sensor and the actual mount which is bad, like you can always add more space, but taking out space is really hard. Um, that's when I realized that there's a lot of actual play in this mount, and I was able to get it to the actual number just by supporting the lens uh, properly. So if I add a lens support here and lock it in, I can get the performance that I need. And this is just due because this is not a very good mount. You can see the play in a lot of directions. And if I had the option of getting the actual MFT locking mount for the Z cam, I would have, but it was not out by the time we tested this. So this is something that I have to take into account when shooting with the MFT. On the bright side, I tested this on the Panasonic GH5 and the mount was off by 0 0.01. So it's within acceptable tolerance and performance should be as expected. Sidebar, non-parallel focal plane. Our sagging MFT mount affects our spherical lenses focus too, but not in the same way it does for anamorphics. The angle of our mount would cause the focal plane to tilt and not be parallel to the sensor anymore. You can actually see this done on purpose with tilt shift lenses. Adjusting this tilt and providing support to the lenses is key for having the image land on the sensor as it should, flat instead of at an angle, which would definitely affect the performance. And that's one of the most important things about this shootout, making sure that this is a usable test, that you can compare the results and say, ah, okay, there were some standards and there was some practice, and that's what we're doing here. So I hope you learned something about flanges, about swapping mounts on the Z cam, and the importance of that for anamorphic lenses to do what they're supposed to do. Thank you for watching, I'm Chit Fahedungs, and I'll see you on the next one.